Okay guys, uh, so in this tutorial we are going to build a car rim. Uh, we're going to build a Mercedes uh, AMG rim. Uh, it's pretty complicated. Uh, hopefully I'm going to make this uh, fairly simple for you. Um, got a bunch of different reference images here. Got some front uh, on shots. Uh, some varying degrees of turn to all the way up to a three quarter. I'm going to stick on the three quarter view here. and. Um, this time we're going to use an edge flow modeling technique which I've used in some of my previous videos and we're going to continue to use it. Uh, the reason why is because uh, I think it's kind of uh, friendly to beginners and it takes a lot of the guesswork out of uh, modeling ahead of time by providing you with a blueprint uh, for your mesh uh, before you actually uh, start building anything. So what I've done here is I have taken uh, a shot of the rim and I've just kind of divided it up in terms of uh, what we need to build. So the rim here is uh, a normal rim with uh, five hub uh, bolts here. And so uh, it's really easier for you, just so you guys know, uh, because this five hub uh, bolt system is kind of a standard for uh, cars, uh, it's easier if you pick a, a rim that has an, the number of spokes that's basically divisible uh, by five. Uh, and the reason for that is because the spokes will line up with the bolts and it'll just make your life easier. Uh, if you don't do one that's divisible by five, uh, then what happens is um, you end up with the uh, lug bolts kind of being off kilter from the detail of your rim and it just causes problems. So um, keep your life simple if you're going to do your own rim and uh, do something that uh, is a uh, basically divisible evenly by five okay so we have this uh, rim and it's got five spokes conveniently and so uh, consider this whole thing here a spoke and then this center portion here is just a cutout of that spoke so we got one spoke here essentially we have here a center line which I've drawn all the way down through the center point of the rim and then I've determined that if there's five spokes, all you have to do is take 360 degrees, which is a full circle, so 360 degrees, and divide by five, which gives you 72 degrees. So one-fifth of 360 degrees equals 72 degrees. All right, so that's what these two lines here represent. And then from there, we can see here, this is the cross-section of the rim that we need to build. And once we build that, we're just going to duplicate it uh, four more times, and that's going to complete the rim. But within this section that we need to build, if you look here down the center line, it's pretty much symmetrical from left to right. So we're going to get an even uh, bigger savings here when we go to build this thing where we only have to build one side. So we only have to build half of the 72 degree segment, which is this big piece of the pie. We only have to build this little pizza slice size one here, which is only 36 degrees okay so um, that's some of the math behind it I promised I wouldn't uh, do any e equations so uh, keeping it as simple as possible alright so then what I did was I went in here and I just kinda started drawing my edge flow in Photoshop uh, based on where my detail needed to be so uh, the edges basically follow uh, perpendicular to whatever the surface detail is so if we look here in my hub we have this section here which is flat so therefore I have all these uh, edges and they can be flat so I don't need anything to contour to any shape so those are all just planning on being flat and then I have this little cutout here for my lug uh, bolt here and you can see here that gets a little crazy because it was, it was flat in this section but then it suddenly starts rising up and um, there's quite a bit of shape there and then the, the cutout for that lug just cut straight down through the rim as if it was drilled through there which it probably was that's probably a solid aluminum uh, and they just drilled right through there uh, to core that out but what I need to do is I need to plan out how many edges or vertices I need in order for me to define that circle and so what I've done here is I've kind of minimal, minimally picked the optimal number of uh, vertices that I need to draw that circle with regard to still having enough edge flows in order to capture this shape here. All right. 
So the shape really starts from this edge and then to the next one, the next one, the next one, the next one up, and it kind of creates this little arc shape here. And so what I needed to do is I needed enough edges to create the arc and enough edges to create the circle. And so what I did was I kind of just figured out ahead of time uh, the optimal flow for that for the shape. And then if we look over here on the rim, so on the other side of the log here, we look like the rim starts to turn downward and in a little bit. So we have a, a nice hard edge here that pretty much contours the entire rim and then comes down here. And then in here it starts to sink in. And so that's where my edge flows start flowing with that surface like that to go down and into the surface. And then of course if we keep going up the rim, we're to uh, essentially this portion of the spoke which is pretty flat. So from about here onward it's pretty much flat until we get up here and then at about that point it starts turning down and in. Okay, So this is the edge flow uh, map and this is kind of my road map. If enough people ask for it, uh, I'll do another video where I actually explain how I arrived at all this, but um, I've done enough of those now that I'm, I'm hoping you guys kind of uh, understand the, uh, the logic. And I'm just trying to speed this up so you can just grab this image and, and start modeling instead of uh, actually figuring out, figuring out the edge flow. And then uh, once you do one of these, it kind of it starts making a little bit more sense and it's easier for you to do on your own. Alright, so I'm going to push these images off to the side here and we're going to go ahead and get started. <coughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a new scene just to make sure that I don't have anything in here that uh, um, I need to get rid of. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and go into my top orthographic, or no, I'm sorry, I want to go into my front orthographic viewport. And I'm just going to turn on my uh, grid snapping here for a second. And I'm going to create a polygon primitive plane, all right? And I'm going to hold down my shift key because I want to make this thing uh, exactly square. And the shift key will uh, do that for you. If you don't hold the shift key down, uh, you can end up making it kind of an odd shape like that. Uh, so I always like to hold on the shift key. And then I'm going to scale this thing up a little bit, give it a little bit of size so that my scale is not pathetically small. And then I'm going to come over here into my perspective viewport. And I'm going to right click on this mesh and I'm going to assign a new material to it. I'm going to assign a Lambert. And then for my color channel, I'm going to map uh, a file to that and all the file is is just an image file so I'm going to say file and then I'm going to navigate to that uh, image file here uh, by clicking on the folder here and linking up to my image file. There's my little reference image that I was just looking at it has all my edge flow on it. If I click on this little sample thing here it'll draw my preview image and then if I uh, hit the 6 key in my viewport we can see here that I have my uh, background image and everything looks good. Alright, so the next thing I want to do here is I'm going to select this background plane and I just kind of want to move it backwards and uh, my move manipulator is not showing up so let me uh, pause the video for a sec. Okay, uh, sorry about that. Uh, basically I've been uh, burning uh, Maya up here uh, for the past uh, week or so and uh, my preferences had gotten corrupted so I went ahead and trashed my prefs and now I got my move manipulator back and uh, everything's good. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to move this plane back a little bit and that's just so I can kind of see what I'm doing and so the plane doesn't really get in the way because I'm going to be modeling uh, most of my stuff here up on the origin line here. And then I'm going to create a new layer uh, after I selected this object, I create uh, a new layer and assign the selection to that layer. And I'm going to call this one ref plane for the layer name underscore L. And then now I have my ref plane on a layer and I can reference it so that I can uh, basically not make any mistakes and accidentally select it. So that's kind of important. Then I'm going to pop over here to my front orthographic view and I'm going to hit my six key because I want to see my shaded uh, mesh here on, uh, on my uh, front orthographic view. All right, And so now I'm ready to start modeling. So I'm going to go over here into the front ortho and I'm going to turn um, and I'm going to just draw a line. So to kind of expedite the, the creation of all these uh, this, this mesh, all these edge flows, 
I'm going to um, just kind of cheat here a little bit and I'm going to create a line. So I'm going to go to create CV curve tool and I'm going to open up the dialog for this. I want to create a linear CV curve. All right. And then I'm going to uh, turn on my snap to grids here and I'm going to snap on my grid line. Then I'm going to turn it back off and I'm just going to trace one of these lines that basically has all these edges going all the way up. So I'm going to just click, here we go, on each of these blue dots which indicate uh, that that's a vertex and I'm going to draw my line out whoops, ahead of time and the reason for this is because I want to uh, draw the line first and then I just want to get that complex shape here, this little run here, that uh, the slope that it makes out of the way right away. All right? So I made my line and now I'm going to rotate my line up. And it's kind of hard to see until I turn off. So I'll turn off the background image here for a sec. So I made my line. I'm going to leave it where I created it and turn off the background image for a sec. And now I'm going to rotate my line up so that it's just on the uh, the center line here and then you can see here that my line is kind of jaggy it's not exactly perfect and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on it go to control vertex and then I'm going to hit the R key here and what I want to do is I want to scale this thing so that uh, I flatten it out and before I do that I'm also going to uh, make sure that my pivot point is set to a world here because it's a little bit off kilter and I want to make sure that uh, that uh, that's set correctly. So it's currently set to object, so I want to change that to world. And then now what I want to do is I just want to scale this down. And I'm going to scale it down until I see it going straight up and down, and that's good enough for me. And now I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to control vertex mode. And what that's going to allow me to do is it's going to allow me to shape this line here. So now I'm going to turn back on my reference image because I want to show you while I'm doing this what control vertices correspond to what. Right? So this control ver vertex that I've selected is basically at the origin of my edge flow and if I select this control vertex that is basically where the medallion inset goes on the image and then this control vertex, the very next one, is basically where um, that the beginning and the end of the flat line uh, segment here of my curve goes, okay? And so what I'm going to do here is from this line on, so from this vertex on, this is where my rim starts to have its shape, okay? So it's this one, and that's all flat. And then this stuff right here all starts to jut up pretty quick, and that's what gives my uh, rim kind of such a uh, dramatic shape here. So I'm going to pull all these guys up one at a time. Until we get up to the top portion of the rim which is flat. So basically what it is is if I can put this image where we can see it simultaneously. We have this edge here which corresponds to uh, this edge right here where it's flat. This vertex here or control vertex represents this portion of the rim where it's also all flat. And then from all the rest of the vertices on we kind of have this nice rise and slope here for the rim. And it may actually be a little bit steeper in uh, the center portion then I have it and so I'm just going to adjust that a little bit I think it kinda it, it's a little bit steeper than I uh, I have it uh, portrayed there so I'm going to just go ahead and but then once it gets to a point it kinda flattens out very quickly alright so there we go and I'm being careful, I don't want to move these vertices in X and Y, or uh, I'm sorry, up and down, because I don't want to move them from their respective positions uh, with respect to my uh, blueprint over here. All right. So now what I want to do here is I have my shape drawn. I want to go ahead and um, I'm going to revolve 
this curve so that I can get the shape of that hub uh, before um, I'm actually going to start pulling points and modeling. All right, so I'm, now I have my curve selected here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my surfaces menu set. And I'm going to go to the command here uh, called revolve. And I'm going to open up the dialog for this guy. I want to revolve this curve with respect to the z-axis which is pointing directly towards my front uh, orthographic viewport here. So I'm going to go into, I want to uh, revolve this about z. I want the number of segments, I'm just going to use the default number of segments which is 8 and the surface degree I want to be linear and I'm going to go ahead and say apply. And so what's going to happen here is it's going to create my surface and um, the default is eight, uh, eight segments, because that's what I put in there. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into my shading mode, and I want to go into X-Ray, and then I'm going to pop over here into my front orthographic viewport. And with this new revolve shape selected, I'm going to change the number of sections by uh, clicking right here in the middle, and I'm just kind of middle mouse dragging here. Uh, in the viewport and what I'm trying to do is I want to start counting edges so I've got one edge here I've got another edge here and I just want to make sure that I have the same number of edges in my revolve here as I do in my drawing so really if I wanted to cheat and make this a lot quicker all I have to do is count this line right here so I got one edge two edges three edges four edges corresponding five edges it corresponds six edges it corresponds seven edges it corresponds and then finally eight edges so that number of edges right there corresponds almost perfectly with my drawing so at this point I'm kinda happy with what I've done and I could just go ahead and uh, right click the other, oh, the other thing I wanted to do is I want to make sure that I also have the same number of edges um, not only vertically but horizontally as well. So I'm just going to do a quick check on that and it looks like those are also lining up uh, very nicely. Uh, probably because of the, the work that I just did here uh, to do that. So now what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and go into I'm going to select my mesh here and oops one thing I did wrong there I'm going to reselect the curve. I forgot to change my uh, geometry output so to polygons so that was a NURB surface. So I'm going to do that again. I'm going to go into surfaces and I'm going to go to revolve here. I'm going to keep everything the same, but this time output geometry, I want to click on polygons. I want to select quads. And then for tessellation method, I'm going to do control points and I'm going to say apply. And it's going to create the surface that looks pretty much the same as the one I just did. And then I have to go into the revolve settings. And now I can go ahead and change this back. And again, I just want to count my edges. So I'm going to go uh, 1, 2, we got 1, 2, looks like we're missing one, so i got to go up a little more. We got 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and now i got one too many. So I'm going to come back here, there we go, 1, 2, 3, 4, five six seven eight perfect okay and now I'm ready to right click on this guy and I want to go into face mode and maybe before I do what I was about to do here I want to just check my surface real fast to uh, I'm going to turn off my grid for a second I just want to check my surface to see how nice that is do I have any bunching or any cat you know uh, spacing issues or uh, basically just does this thing look pretty and that's pretty smooth. I might even just render it real fast uh, to get a, look, a peek at it. That looks pretty good. So I'm happy with it. So now what I want to do is I'm going to go into polygon mode or face mode and I'm going to right click here. I'm going to click drag and what I'm doing is I'm just selecting all of the polygons in my mesh that I don't need because remember uh, here and when I get a second I will show you all my drawing. I'll refresh your memory with what we talked about. Okay, uh, remember 
Uh, the way I divided this thing up was that we only have to build one-fifth of the wheel and then we only have to build half of that one-fifth, which is just this section. So all we're going to have to do is just build this quarter section of the rim and then everything else is going to uh, is going to uh, come off of this. All right. So uh, what I've done is I've just kind of broken this into a piece that now is um, a quarter, or I'm sorry, a half of a fifth of the rim. And now what I want to do is I just want to make sure that this thing is going to duplicate seamlessly uh, around to uh, create the rim again. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to test it. So I've broken it down to just a small piece that I need. And now what I want to do is I'm going to go to Edit, Duplicate Special, and I'm just going to reset these for a sec and then I want to go I want to scale this in negative X so it goes X Y and Z so I'm going to do a negative one in X and I'm going to say apply and there we go that thing uh, it mirrored perfectly uh, the, the vertices are right up right on top of each other which is great so now I'm going to go ahead and um, Go ahead and combine these without welding the verts. So I'm going to go into Polygon Menu Set and I'm going to say Mesh Combine. And then what I want to do is I'm going to hit Control D for Duplicate and then I'm going to hit my E key for Rotate and I'm going to rotate this guy a negative 72 degrees and then I'm going to hit Shift D to duplicate with Transform. And here's where we can see we have a slight issue because now there is a slight gap between these different patches. All right. So if I don't want there to be a gap like this uh, anymore, uh, I have a couple options. And first would be to just bridge these and insert an edge here, but that's not going to be exactly right because uh, I want this thing to uh, mirror seamlessly from now on or duplicate seamlessly. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just delete these two guys. I'm going to select these three and I'm going to say Mesh Combine. And then I'm going to go into Vertex Mode. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use my Merge to Center command. And I'm just going to kind of go down the mesh here and do these, whoops, do these uh, individually. And what Merge to Center does is it takes the two vertices and it kind of just mathematically splits the difference between the two. And what that's going to do for me, you'll see here in a second, after I get all these merged. Okay, so I've merged them all and then now I'm going to go back into face mode here. And I can start deleting all of these polygons that I don't need anymore. And you might be saying to yourself, wow, man, that is a lot of uh, merging and deleting uh, polygons. Isn't there an easier way to do this? And the answer kind of is no. Um, what this does is you're getting this thing, you're doing kind of the grunt work here ahead of time to get this thing set up. And the answer is that this right here, what I'm doing, getting it all set up so that it it will duplicate seamlessly and tie together is a hell of a lot easier than if I were to go ahead and try to model all of these spokes and all these little cutouts uh, to be the exact same for the scope of the entire room. That would be a near impossibility and uh, you wouldn't even want to do it. You'd, you'd give up uh, about a day into it, I guarantee you. All right, so now that I've done this, what I want to do is I just want to duplicate this guy again. So I'm going to hit Shift, D, or I'm sorry, I want to hit uh, Control D for duplicate. And then I want to rotate this patch a negative 72. And now look at that, that lines up perfectly. And now if I hit Shift D for duplicate with transform, we can see here that when I, the next time I duplicate this, it's all going to line up perfectly. And we've got a small gap between uh, the edges, but that's uh, well within uh, manageable tolerance here for, for our mesh. So now we have this thing set up and it's perfectly lined up. And what I want to do is I just want to delete the other half of this because I only need one half. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to come in here and delete this last little polygon. All right. And so I have my cross section here of my mesh 
And now we're ready to uh, start doing some more detailed modeling. All right. So the next thing that I want to do is I actually want to um, start doing, um, start building in my custom pieces. And I, I want these edge flows here to kind of flow along with uh, my drawing a little bit more here. So I've got some sections here. So I'm going to go into vertex. And I've got some sections here where I just need to cinch these lines up with the lines in my image. And the reason I have to do that is because that is the way that the line flows on the actual model for the actual details. So this line here, it's very important that I have an edge that flows right along that line. And so I'm going to pull these guys up here into position. I'm going to pull this one down. And so I'm just kind of building uh, my custom mesh that I've uh, drawn. Took the time to draw it in Photoshop. And then um, I've got a little bit of a discrepancy here. Uh, that's fine. I'm going to leave that alone for now. And then uh, these over here, uh, we've got a little bit of difference between uh, the image um, on the screen and uh, the image that's in my drawing. But I'm going to go ahead and leave that alone um, because the reason is is that this surface is actually slope, sloping kind of perfectly. And I don't want to mess with that. If I go and start moving these vertices around, let's just do a couple of them so you kind of see what happens. If I go and start moving these around, see, it's a little bit hard to tell right now, but um, you start to get a little bit of modeling um, or bumpiness because uh, I'm moving the verts around. It didn't really affect it on this one, but if I did a bunch of them, uh, it would basically throw my mesh off. So I'm going to leave those alone for now. And what I want to do is I only want to move those uh, when I need to. All right, And right now I just don't need to. So now what I'm going to do is I'm also going to come over here and grab a few of these guys. And I'm just going to leave these alone because they're flowing pretty nice. And just because they don't line up with my underlying drawing uh, is, is really uh, not that big of a deal. So I'm just going to let it go. All right. Now the next thing that uh, we want to do here is we want to uh, start tightening up this circle here. All right. And so this one is a little bit more complicated. So what I'm trying to do here is this, this is this is a little bit more complicated. But what I want to do is I want to model this hole here in my mesh without having to use a Boolean. All right. Um, I, I could use a Boolean and I could clean it up. But uh, in this case, I, I just really want to try to do this without a Boolean to uh, make things simpler. So I want to show you guys a little technique here. So I have notice I have my little, I got my surface here, and all my slopes are kind of perfect, and everything's uh, running together. If I smooth this thing, we don't really have any uh, dents in it or anything. It's still very smooth. All right. So I'm going to take the smooth off. What I want to do is I want to move these points to coincide with my underlying drawing, and watch what happens if I move these uh, points by just pulling and dragging them here in the orthographic viewport and then I'm going to pop back into my perspective viewport and you can see here how see how this point here is kind of lifted up off of the slope of the surface that I had uh, so painstakingly uh, planned out and so now that's going to be a little rough if I hit the three key here it's a little bit hard to tell but we definitely have a little bit of a dent there in the surface all right so I'm going to undo that last move and I'm going to do it again a little bit different way so I'm going to take my smooth off and now what I want to do is I'm going to select this vertex, but I'm going to hold down my C key for snap to curve. And watch what happens if I hold down the C key and then I snap to this edge that I've already drawn here. And so wherever I have an edge that I've already drawn that already has a nice surface, I'm going to snap to that edge and move the point along that edge. And look what's happening here. I am no longer getting that kind of bumpiness to my surface. The, when I'm moving the vertex, it's flowing along the already drawn surface and it's keeping the arc, basically. So I'm going to keep going over here. So I'm holding down the C key and I'm snapping to that edge. And if I pop over here to the perspective viewport, 
maybe if I do it in there you can see a little bit better about what I'm doing. If I hold down the C key, I snap it in, I missed this one, so C key, and I'm snapping it to that arc, and see how it's following along that edge that I've already drawn? And that is definitely much, much more desirable of a move than if I were to just go ahead and move this willy-nilly. So I'm doing the same thing, holding on the C key, and I'm snapping right along that edge to move this vertex into position. So C key, snapping right along that edge. And I'm not, again, paying too much attention to having this thing line up perfectly uh, with my other vertices here. And this one here, I want to move back into position. And this one, again, I want to move it up, but I'm going to hold down the C key to snap to my existing arc. Sometimes this thing's a little bit finicky to get it to snap. There we go. I finally got it. You can tell when it snaps because you try to move it in left and right and it won't go anywhere. It'll just slide along that line. So this one again I'm going to snap. Snap to the line and there we go finally. And I'm just kind of building that arc shape there. Now if you'll notice here I'm missing a few edges here and that's because uh, the shape here uh, is a little bit different from what we have on the drawing. So in this case what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete the section here that I don't need anymore. Um, or I could go in here and insert an edge loop. I think I'll do it that way. So I'm going to go into uh, Edit Mesh and I'm going to say Insert Edge Loop Tool. And I'm going to insert an edge loop right there. And then I'm going to go ahead and go into Vertex Mode. And I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm holding down my C key. I want to move this vertex, but I want it to slide along that existing edge that I already have here. So C, there we go. And then finally, I've got this vertex here and this vertex here. And I'm going to hold down my C key and I'm going to slide that one along the edge. And then same thing for this one. Okay, and we've got our circle built here. And then if we come over here into uh, our perspective viewport, we can see here that we kind of have this wacky shape here uh, that would have been very hard to do. And again, we could have done this with a Boolean, but um, I usually try to avoid Booleans uh, unless I absolutely have to use them. And now I can go ahead and delete that segment. And so what we've done there effectively is we've traced the circle in our uh, in our blueprint here and we've cut this complicated uh, cutout out while preserving uh, the slope of our surface and without using a boolean which is uh, kind of difficult sometimes so um, very cool and then now to finish this off all I have to do is go into edge mode and then I'm going to shift double click on the edge at the opposite end and now I'm going to go to edit mesh and I'm going to extrude these guys and I'm just going to pull it straight down, all right? Because I don't want to do anything fancy with this. And then I'm going to go into. Uh, I was going to go into vertex mode, but I realized that uh, I didn't need to. I can just flatten this out by uh, holding the uh, or uh, scaling the edges down themselves. And then once I've got it flattened out, I'm just going to kind of pull it up because right now I don't know how deep that cutout is. Uh, so I'm just going to leave that as kind of a placeholder there. All right, so we've got um, our cutout here built in, and then at this point it might be a good idea to hit the 3 key to just see what this looks like smooth. And then I'm going to deselect it for a second and turn off uh, wireframe on shaded. And all I'm doing here is I'm just checking to see if this is smooth or if I have any kind of weird uh, surface detail, which I don't, so that looks pretty good. All right, so the next thing I may want to do here is I may just want to um, take these vertices on this side of the coin and I might just want to start modeling a little bit of the shape in for that and so we have this section here and it looks like after the cutout it kind of I, I was looking at this before and after this cutout this is kind of flat so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab all of these verts here and I'm going to kind of try to flatten those out. And then I'm going to make them flush with the top of my cutout here. 
roughly. And then I know that they start falling off from uh, about this edge here, it starts sloping down, and then for this edge here, then it really starts sloping down, all right? And then this edge here um, corresponds to, I think it's this point, I just wanna confirm that. So there it is, it's that point, I was right. So it's this point, and this one starts to slope a little bit also, a little bit kinda down and in, like so, maybe not that much. And there we go. All right, so I've got my cutout in and I've got my slope built here. And now I, I just have one more thing to do. I have this little cutout shape over here on this side. And uh, we have a few options on this. Uh, I wanna, it's probably worth pointing out here that on my drawing I have, um, I'm planning on making this an eight sided hole. So eight sided so that it's completely round. The reason I'm doing that is because I'm kind of building my mesh here as a control cage mesh so that it would work as a game uh, game res model without me having to uh, smooth it um, for the surface and so if I make this hole here eight sided then what it's going to allow me to do is it's going to allow me to have it look um, good without it subdividing or smoothing the mesh all right? But if I said to myself that self, you know, I'm going to uh, subdivide this mesh later, then what I would be able to get away with doing here would be uh, I could actually have this cutout here at this section just be a four-sided uh, box, basically. And that would uh, smooth down perfectly once I hit the smooth button. So what I would do is I would just go ahead and go in here to, I'll just show you how this works real fast. I go into vertex mode and I know that I have a hole that cuts out here and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into um, polygons, I'm going to select the two verts, I'm going to say uh, connect components and I'm going to do the same thing here again, hit the G key and then I'm going to go into face mode, I'm going to delete that and I just want to illustrate to you guys what happens if I uh, do this. Um, if I hit the three key to smooth this out, well right now you can't really tell, it's kind of broken. But if I were to, to take this mesh, and I'm just going to go ahead and uh, duplicate it across, mirror it across, and then I'm going to combine it, so I'm going to say mesh combine. And then if I were to duplicate it one more time and rotate it, say, 72 degrees, negative 72 degrees, and then I were to go ahead and combine these two meshes, so I'm going to combine them. And I went in here to vertex and I selected those vertices here and I said merge to center and then I do the same thing here. And I'll just mer merge a couple behind there as well. And then I hit the three key, what hap look what happens. This thing turns into almost a perfect circle just being a four-sided uh, mesh. And honestly, if I were modeling this for a film asset, this is probably how I would, I would go ahead and do it. Um, and then I would just smooth it down later. But being that I want this to be a universal asset, so I want it to be able to use for a video game uh, or a film project, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to undo back out of all of these commands here. And I'm going to um, subdivide this a little bit further so that I get an eight-sided circle in there. And this time I'm going to go ahead and do that uh, using a Boolean. So uh, when you have a complicated surface like this where I've got this very steep pitch and then I have, um, I want to cut an eight-sided circle in there and I don't want there to be any artifacts from that. Uh, unfortunately, there's just kind of uh, not a better way to do this. So I'm going to select my mesh here and I'm going to say uh, edit, I'm going to go to edit duplicate special and I'm going to mirror this across and then I'm going to go ahead and say mesh combine and then I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to rotate it 72 degrees, negative 72 and then I'm going to hit shift D I want to duplicate it all the way around. And now I'm going to go ahead and just combine these two. So I'm going to say mesh, combine. And then I'm going to go into vertex mode here. 
And I want to merge these vertices, so I'm going to go into uh, Mesh, Merge, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do something a little higher, 0 0.05, and I'm going to say Apply. And then what I'm going to do here is I want to create a, uh, a polygon primitive, and I'm going to do a cylinder. And I want it to be perfectly um, centered right here on this vertex. So I'm going to go to Create Polygon Primitives Cylinder, and I'm just going to go ahead and holding down my Shift key to make it uh, perfectly uh, circular, or same that it's uh, basically going to have the same height that it is is width. It just kind of makes it easier to create uh, polygon primitives when you do it that way. And then I'm going to go ahead and select my cylinder. In this viewport, I really want to turn on my wireframe unshaded so I can uh, see these things. And there's my cylinder. And I said I wanted that this cylinder, I wanted it to have eight sides. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here to my cylinder uh, creation settings. And I'm going to change this to eight sided. And then I'm going to rotate this so that the mesh points here line up with the uh, edges on my mesh. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to scale this guy up quite a bit so that it just kind of intersects that mesh. And now I can select my mesh and select my cylinder. And now I'm going to go to mesh and I'm going to say booleans. And I'm just going to do a union. And then so we can see here that that shape has been cut right into my, other, my compound shape. And now I'm going to go into face mode here. And I'm just going to go ahead and delete the top off of this guy. And then I'm going to go into vertex mode and I'm going to select these verts. And I'm just going to pull this thing down and in. And I'm going to basically make it as a placeholder about the same depth as my uh, other hole there. Now you may say to yourself, Joel, why did you pull all the points on this one? And then on this one you did a Boolean. And the answer is because... Um, the number of points that I was allowed to have on this cutout was completely dependent on the number of points that I decided to put on this cutout. And so I kind of figured out ahead of time that my optimal number for this cutout was a 20-sided circle. And so I have roughly, uh, it's nine, so nine uh, edges over here, and then nine edges on the other side, and it totals 20 because we get to share one. And then for this one, um, I decided to do 8 because, again, I want this to look circular right now in its low-res cage, right? Now, the problem with this is that when you do a cutout like this, I want to point out that uh, something. So I'm going to first go ahead and just merge up these vertices and clean this up again. So one of the things, you know, you, you probably uh, heard people say, you know, you really don't want to use Booleans and da-da-da-da-da. And maybe now there should be a little bit of clarification on that subject. Um, you don't want to use Booleans incorrectly, all right? Uh, you want to use them correctly, <laughs> meaning that you can use them to cut into your polygon shapes, but you have to be aware that the resulting shapes are not necessarily legal. See all these extra points here? This is kind of illegal. So it creates a bunch of illegal faces. And the reason why um, I steer new modelers away from this is because it's kind of a bad habit so what I do is I don't want people to use booleans uh, until they kind of understand them and so now we're getting to a point here where I'm trying to get you to understand them all right so it creates this illegal geometry here and what you have to do after the fact and this one's a little bit harder to see here if I zoom in see how that that's illegal geometry so what we have to do after we use a boolean is we actually have to clean it up so I'm going to go into Edit Mesh. Uh, I'm going to use the Merge Vertex tool here. And I'm just going to pull these vertices here. And notice that I'm also pulling the verts on, um, on my edge here to coinc coincide with the circle. So I'm going to go circle dependent rather than dependent on my shape. And then I'm going to check this one up here. And you can see how bad these can get we have these two vertices and you probably won't be able to see it with compression but I have two vertices that are just so close to each other 
that if you didn't go in there and clean these up you would never know all right and then what I need to do is this is this is where um, this gets a little dangerous because I've cut this shape in and right now it looks pretty good but watch what happens when I go ahead and select these two guys and then I'm going to say edit mesh connect components and I connect all these guys and what I'm doing is I'm making these we're, we're formally uh, one, two, three, four, five, six sided uh, faces which are legal. I'm converting these to either you always want to convert them to either quads or triangles so I'm going to connect these two components and that's going to turn it into a quad. And now if I hit the smooth key we can see here that it smooths down kind of nicely. But what you want to watch for is that when you have these kind of diagonal edges uh, diagonal to your your surface that you can end up with artifacts if you're not completely careful so if you were to say go in here and start moving this point around so I'm just gonna grab one of these vertices and move it kind of up or down and then I smooth this again well it's hard to see right now um, but what's gonna happen is over time if you move those points around you're gonna end up with some serious artifacts right around the rim of this uh, edge here and so I want to undo what I just did and maybe w later when we get into uh, chamfering all these out so uh, I can illustrate that point a little bit uh, a little bit more to you right now it's it's kind of not showing up because uh, the surface is uh, really just kind of low low poly and and uh, it's not really showing off its uh, ugliness yet okay so I got my two cutouts in now I don't need all this extra geometry here so I can go ahead and delete these guys and then remember I only have to build a quarter of this so what I can do here is I can go into my face mode and I'm just gonna start getting rid of half of this thing so I did have to mirror this over and connect it just so I could do uh, this boolean operation here so that's what you might be asking why I did that. Um, that's why I had to I had to actually build the other section in order to be able to cut this boolean. If you try to boolean on a, just doing a half, uh, you'll find out that the, it's not exactly reliable. So you can try it, and you may be able to get it to work. I, um, I don't think you will, but uh, you know I don't know everything, so. You may be able to get that to work, but uh, for me it's just easier to go ahead and boolean it out when you have a full full object there. Okay, so now we're ready to uh, keep going. We got our cutouts built. Everything smooths out nicely. And so now we just need some more of the surface. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the six key so I can see uh, my wireframe unshaded. I'm going to hit the one key so we can get down to... Um, our control cage and I'm gonna keep uh, building out my mesh here so what I'm gonna do here is I have this uh, polygon which is currently um, kind of an odd shape here it's not exactly right so I'm gonna go into edit mesh and I'm gonna get the interactive split tool and I'm just gonna go ahead and split this in and what that's gonna do is it's gonna give me an extra vertex so that I can move this down into position and then if I wanted to, I could go ahead and split this one more time. So I'm going to say Edit Mesh, Interactive Split, and I'm going to split this in. And really, I just did that split so I could get this vertex here. And then I'm going to go into Edge Mode, and I'm just going to delete that edge. Okay, so now my control cage is looking uh, like my underlying map. Again, let's not pay attention to the fact that these uh, edge flows don't completely line up. It's okay. Uh, I did this one in Photoshop, so it's probably just a discrepancy between what Maya drew and what Photoshop drew. And um, the key is just the number of edges and the way they flow. All right. So the next thing I want to do here is I want to go into face mode. I'm sorry, edge mode. And I'm going to select all of these edges and now I'm going to say edit mesh extrude. I'm going to click to go to world mode and now I want to just go ahead and move these into position. These I'm going to go ahead and merge down. 
Uh, I just realized here I, I may not have to actually merge these down because what I can do is I'm just going to put them kind of close together and I may have to merge that down later at a later date but I don't know that I have to so I'm not I'm not going to do it I'm going to leave that edge in there for now and then I'm going to go into edge mode again I sometimes you know I draw my roadmap and if you guys model uh, in this manner remember you can change this on the fly so if you get over here and, and you see something and, and you decide you want to just change your roadmap a little bit that's fine that's what a blueprint's for right uh, if you go out to a construction site and you watch them build a house you'll see that uh, they're consulting the blueprint constantly but they're also revising the blueprint constantly based on the, the needs of the construction and so that's essentially what I just did there I said uh, you know what? I'm gonna mod I'm gonna revise that a little bit here, based on what I'm building. All right, and now I'm gonna go ahead and extrude this one more time. Do it in world mode again, and I'm gonna go to vertex mode, and I'll pull this one in here a little bit, and then I'm gonna go into edge mode again, and I'm gonna extrude it one more time. and then vertex mode again and then edge mode again and then I'm going to extrude it one more time I'm going to go to world mode and then vertex mode here and finally there we go okay so I wasn't uh, really checking those in the um, the perspective view, if you'll notice, and that's because I kind of just knew those were flat, and I just uh, I guess I didn't care what they did. Uh, I just knew that they were flat and uh, what they were essentially going to do. So now that I've got these guys built out and it corresponds to my edge flow, now I just need to figure out what this shape does. So I believe that it kind of slopes down and in. So I want to confirm that by going to my three-quarter view and there it is we've got uh, this little edge here of the rim and if I get that image back we can see here that from about this edge flow here it starts to bend down and in and so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and grab all these edges And I'm going to just pull those kind of down. Like so. And that just happens so easily. And then I just want to conf I want to check this with the uh, slope of my reference image here, my three-quarter view and maybe it's a little bit more pronounced in the photo so now I'm going to sw switch to vertex mode here and and we'll call that close enough for now All right. okay so the next thing that we want to do here is we've kind of got this whole other side of this uh, spoke that we haven't really touched and so I'm gonna go ahead and select all of these edges here and I'm gonna grab these and I'm gonna say extrude and then I'm just gonna extrude these straight down for now and depth wise I'll consult my uh, image over here my three-quarter and I just say uh, whatever it looks like about an inch and a half something like that and what I just did actually looks okay so I'm gonna leave that alone and then what I could do here is I could come over and grab uh, these guys 
and I'm going to pull those down kind of to match as well. All right, and we've got a little bit of weirdness over here, but that's okay. I'm going to deal with that later. And then now what I want to do is I want to grab these edges or even vertices on the portion that I just extruded down and I want to line these up with uh, my image here my uh, blueprint and I'm just going to kind of kick these in a little bit okay that looks pretty good so there we go this thing's starting to take some shape and now what I probably want to do is I want to start modeling this section of the rim because I have the spoke I got my cutouts uh, if I wanted to I could fill this in so I think I'll do the I'm gonna go into edge mode real fast and I'm just gonna the way I'm doing this is I'm selecting one so I select one edge and then I shift select another edge and what Maya does is it selects all the edges in between and then I'm gonna go to edit mesh and I'm gonna say extrude and then I'm gonna extrude these guys in and then go to vertex mode and I'm going to say edit mesh merge to center and then I'll center up this pivot right on my center line and okay now what I'm ready to do is I'm ready to start building this uh, section here of the room and so what I want to do is um, I'm going to create an arc because if I look at my reference image for this This is basically to me that looks just like a, a quarter arc, so that's just 90 degrees uh, and it's just revolved all the way around in a circle. So what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm not going to make my life hard when it, when it should be simple, and so I'm just going to go into my side ortho, and I'm going to create an arc here. So, uh, but the first thing I might want to do is just build like a guide curve alright because I don't know how deep to make my arc so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to build a, a quick guide here so I'm going to go into create uh, nerves primitives and I'm going to do a circle turn on my grid snaps for one second Oops. so I'm going to say create uh, NURBS circle and create my circle here and then I'm going to scale it up and that's basically what I'm doing is I'm creating a guide here that says how thick my this rim piece is All right. so then I'm going to duplicate this again it would be very hard for me to tell how deep that was because I don't have uh, the reference imagery and now something's weird is going on I can't oh there we go I was in sub object mode okay so uh, now what I want to do is I would want to just move these curves over here and kinda set it up for the depth of my rim so basically all I wanted to do is I wanted to set this arc up to determine how deep I, I needed to make my arc here Alright, so this is the top of my rim, and then if I double select this, that's the bottom of my rim. And so my arc needs to be about uh, the size, this distance to this distance. So I'm going to go over here into my side view, and I'm going to just go ahead and say create arc tools, and I'm going to do a two point circular arc. I'm going to click here and here and then here I'm going to draw down and just make a quarter round and there's my arc shape 
I'm going to check my shape with my uh, guide curves that I just made, make sure that it's the right uh, depth. And I got it a little bit skinny, so I'm going to go ahead and pull this up, and then I'm going to scale it down. And that looks pretty good. I'll call it close enough. Okay, the next thing that we want to do here is we want to change this arc um, into a four segment arc. So I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to say control ver vertex. And right now it is, uh, it's actually a cubic arc. So um, I want to remake this arc because I accidentally didn't do something. So uh, let's do this again. I'm going to go ahead and create an arc. This time though, two point circular arc, I want to open up the dialog because I accidentally made it cubic, degree 3, and I want to make it degree 1 linear. And so I'm going to click on here and here. I'm going to make it a quarter round. And then I want to go into the segments and I want to turn it to 4 so that I have 4 edges basically. It's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 total, but uh, essentially three edges down the middle is what I'm looking for. Okay, now that I have that, I'm going to just make sure that my size is correct. I'm going to scale it down just a little bit, okay. And then what I need to do is I need to change the pivot point for this arc so that it corresponds to the center of my wheel here. So I'm going to turn on my snapping for a second and I'm going to move my pivot here down to the center. And then I'm going to hit the E key. I just want to test it there. It'll rotate all the way around. Okay, cool. Now I'm going to select that curve and I'm going to say go into my surfaces menu set and I'm going to say surfaces revolve and this one I want to revolve about Z and I want the surface degree to be linear as well I want the output to be polygons and the, uh, the tessellation method to be control points and I'm going to say apply and then I'm going to go into the uh, revolve settings and for the number of sections I did a little math on my object here and what we have here is we have this little hole uh, where these bolts go in and um, they're actually not quite centered up. You would think that they're in equal increments, but um, I won't uh, explain to you how I arrived at this, but um, I figured it out, and basically these things are about 13 degrees apart. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to rotate my constructed curve. And it's a little bit off kilter, so what I have to do is I have to rotate this thing just a little bit. So that, uh, and then this will allow it so that these guys, if I do a setting of 109 sections, what will happen is these will um, essentially be, the little bolts will be separated about uh, every three uh, polygons. So if I do 216, there we go. And so what I want to do is I just want to check and make sure that these are spread out. So uh, again, I'm not explaining how, how I figured this out. Uh, I'm just kind of doing this so you guys can follow along. So what it is is I got five polygons in between, and I just want to make sure that it's five polygons in between. and then five. It starts to deviate over here a little bit. Um, but uh, you know what? I'm gonna... Oh, no it's not because I actually... Uh, I'm doing every three. So there they go. They're about... They're roughly five five polygons apart and they're... For the most part they're staying evenly spaced. So I'm gonna go ahead and accept that. 
and then I'm going to check my little arc here and it looks good okay and so what I want to do here is I want to go ahead and delete a portion of this mesh the portion that we don't need And I'm going to keep this. I know this is going over the line a little bit, but I'm just going to keep that in case I need it. Uh, we'll be able to determine that later. Okay, and then now we have this section here where we have this little cutout. And so uh, these are actually pretty complicated. I won't lie to you. Uh, it took me a while to figure out what was happening here. But what's basically going on here is these are drilled out and they kind of have a double radius. So it's got a drill out here but then it's got another radius on the other side. So uh, the way that I want to accomplish uh, boring this out is <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and go into vertex mode and we need a, a cylinder about this size. Okay. So I'm gonna select uh, these vertices. I'm gonna hold down that C key. I'm going to hold down that C key and I just want to kind of push this off to the side, moving along that uh, vector of the existing line. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, C key, and I'm just going to move it along that existing edge. Alright. And then now, what we're going to do here is we're going to create a uh, a polygonal uh, cylinder and I'm going to kind of move this along that existing line as well so I'm going to go ahead and create a polygon cylinder and I want to make it about the same size as my green circle there roughly maybe a little bit under and then I want to change the number of sides to be 12 and the reason I'm doing 12 is because if I count it's going to go into this section here and this section has one two three uh, one two three one two three sides and so if I add up all three sides from all four sides it comes out to 12 and then I'm going to move this cylinder down so that it fits right into that little gap. And I want the ledge here to be almost flush with the lip of the rim here. All right. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit my R key here and I'm going to scale this all the way up so that it intersects that completely. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my wireframe on shaded so we can kind of just see what's up and then I'm going to select both objects now it might be a good time to save my scene because I've done a lot and booleans have been known to crash the computer so uh, I'm going to prevent that from happening okay so I'm going to select both meshes and then I'm going to say I want to do boolean again because this is a very compound uh, shape. So I'm going to say uh, polygon menu set and I'm going to go to mesh booleans and I'm going to do a union and there it goes it cut my shape out and then I'm going to go into uh, ed, or I'm sorry, face mode and what I want to do is I want to pull this shape up and I want it to be kind of flush right there with the, uh, the center of this uh, rim here. All right. And the reason for that is because if we look at our image, so I'm going to go to the three quarter view of the rim. You can see here that it's hard to tell, maybe, 
but it, it gets cut in and then there's a ledge there and then there's another lip on the outside and you can kind of see here the radius of this extra um, cylinder here so we have a cylinder that's cut into the side of the edge and then we have another double bore so there's there's I think there's about three radii going on there's one on the interior there's one on the exterior and then there's one here and so what we're going to do to get that approximated is what I just did and now I gotta clean my boolean up so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into uh, edit mesh and I'm going to go to merge vertex tool and what I want to do here is I just want to clean up my polygon I'm kind of getting getting rid of any extra any extra vertices that I may have. All right. So this one goes to there. This one goes to there. This one goes to there. And I think I made a mistake here. Let's go back. I'm going to start at the top here. So I'm going to go to uh, vertex mode. And I'm going to say merge vertex tool. And there we go. So I want this one to go this one. This one to go this one. Okay, so I figured out what happened there. Uh, what happened was I uh, lost track of uh, what I was doing, and this um, polygon, act the cylinder, actually has to be eight-sided. And I went ahead and I was going with the twelve-sided that I had used previously, and that wasn't right. So, um, yeah, that's what happens when uh, when I'm modeling and explaining simultaneously. It, it uh, really always makes it hard. I always end up kind of talking too much and uh, not thinking enough. And that was a case of that. Okay, so I now have this eight-sided polygon and I'm just kind of positioning it in place. I want to kind of just get it halfway uh, in there with all the boundaries. And then I'm just going to scale it up uniform and then I'm going to go ahead, or I'm sorry, not uniform. I'm going to scale it up non-uniform to just make it so it intersects the entire uh, curve there. And then I'm going to click on both, and I'm going to go to Mesh, and I'm going to say Booleans Union. And there we go. And now I can go into Vertex Mode, and I'm going to pull this bottom up. And I want it to kind of intersect uh, the mesh right about here at the halfway mark here on this uh, cylinder. And then again, booleans create some really nasty geometry, so I have to clean it up. So I'm going to go into Edit Mesh, and I'm going to say um, Merge Vertex Tool. And I'm going to move my arcs here to my cylinder, because I want to re retain that circular shape. And then these guys here, I'm going to combine down. And I'm going to merge that one up.
Okey dia okey. And then I'm just going to go into um, my interactive split tool here. And I'm going to finish this arc off. And then I'm just going to grab these two vertices and kind of line them up like that. And that looks good. And then now I told you that this shape had a compound arc and it took me a while to figure it out. So. The way it works is there is this arc, which is the total radius for this radius. And then there's another arc for the bore that they used uh, to bore into this internally for the bolt. And so the way to get that to work correctly, the way they intended, or the way they built it, I'm going to delete this face here. And then I'm going to select these faces and I'm going to extrude these guys. So I'm going to say edit mesh extrude and I'm going to pull these in until the radius on this internal bore is about the same size as the radius of that bolt there. Okay and then now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just pull this down a little bit. Oops, I gotta go to world mode to do it. Just pull this down a little bit. And then I'm gonna grab this set of edges here. And I'm gonna extrude them. So I'm gonna say edit mesh extrude. Pull those back and in. Until it basically lines up with that uh, set of edges there. That looks good. And then, uh, I don't know why, but when I do this extrude, it adds these extra faces. So I'm going to just delete these guys. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Edit Mesh, and I'm going to say uh, Merge Vertex Tool, and merge these vertices up. And then somehow this got a little bit skewed here, so I'm going to select all these verts. maybe just these two. Somehow those got turned down. And I want those to be flat. So I'm just selecting them and I'm going to move them up and flatten them out. Okay. And that's essentially the shape. And so now I can go ahead and cap this off. So I'm going to go ahead and go into face mode, or I'm sorry, edge mode. And I'm going to say edit mesh extrude. And I'll do world mode here and then scale them down to the center. I'm going to vertex mode. And I'm going to say mesh uh, merge to center. And then uh, I think it's hard to tell from the image, but I think that uh, once these guys get extruded in, they also recess down a little bit. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into face mode. And I'm going to say Edit Mesh Extrude. And I'm going to pop into World Mode here. And I'm just going to pull this guy down a little bit. Because it looks like that bolt gets recessed a little. Okay. Alright, so there we go. We got our bolt inset. We got our spoke. I'm just going to take a quick little preview of this. By uh, smoothing it out. I'll turn off my wireframe unshaded for a second. And that looks pretty good. Right now it's pretty nerfy, um, pretty soft. Uh, I'm going to do another pass at this, and we're going to come back and chamfer everything and harden everything up. So what I want to do here is I don't want to build this same uh, thing again. I just want to reuse what I've already done. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come in and select all of these faces. And then I'm going to go ahead and say uh, mesh. And um, I'm going to duplicate 
these faces, so I'm going to do it under Edit Mesh, and I'm going to say Duplicate Face. Where is it? Duplicate Face. There we go. And then now, what I can do here with this guy is I can rotate the mesh into position to line up with where it should go on this other bowl and I'm going to call that close enough and then now all I have to do is go into face mode here and cut these faces out and then patch these in so um, now I'm going to go ahead and say edit mesh or mesh combine and then I'm going to go into vertex mode and I'm going to select all these guys and I'm going to say uh, mesh or edit mesh merge and that's going to weld all those verts up and then if I hit the three key to check my work here now I've got it perfectly smooth I'm going to smooth this one out to boot and there we go. We got our rim. The only thing left for me to do is to go ahead and combine the spoke uh, with this little rim segment here. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that. What I want to do is I just want to um, select my rim segment here and I'm going to go into vertex mode. I want to turn on my wireframe on shaded for a second and I'm just going to start moving these vertices by holding down the V key for snap to vertex and I'm going to kind of snap them into the corresponding position where I want them to go on the, uh, the fillet curve here. Okay, and so this one snap it up to that vertex this one Snap it over to this one, and then this one. I want these uh, two sides here to correspond, and uh, this one I kind of extruded down off of the other side. And so what it's lacking is it's lacking this shape that I modeled into the other side. And so I'm going to borrow these two. I'm going to just go ahead and select these polygons. And I'm going to go into Edit Mesh and I'm going to say Duplicate Face. And then these guys. That Duplicate Face, you really don't want to move it right when you create it. Uh, the thing's very, very finicky. And so you always have to Duplicate Face and then deselect it. Uh, and then move it again later. So I'm going to move this off. And I want to also... Uh, mirror this with respect to X. So I'm going to say edit duplicate special. And there we go. And now I've got that shape relatively similar to the other side. And now I can combine these guys. So I mesh combine. And then I'm going to go into uh, merge vertex tool. And I'm going to sew these guys up. Okay, and so all I have left to do now is I actually have to add some extra edges uh, to my mesh here in order to get these uh, meshes to uh, line up with each other. And so I'm going to go into insert edge loop mode here. And I need one, two, and then now 
I can go into face mode here. I don't want to cut it yet. I was about to delete those, but I don't want to. So I'm going to go into uh, vertex mode, hold down my V key, and I'm just going to snap it. So I'm snapping those extra verts that I just made right into position. And then I need one more, so I'm going to say Edit Mesh, Insert Edge Loop Tool. And then if I hit W and V, I can snap it right to the vertex that it needs to go to. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So I need to add, uh, I believe it's going to be three edges here on the other side as well. So I'm going to say Edit Mesh and I'm going to say insert edge loop one, two, and three and then I'm going to go into vertex mode and I'm going to hold down my B key for snap to vertex Here's a case where I'm going to slide an edge right along another edge. Okay. So we just got some bunching here at this bottom section. I need to alleviate that. There we go. Okay, that looks pretty good. And there's really no need um, to, uh, I think, add any extra edges. Let's see here. I think I can move this one over. So what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to figure out um, how to uh, cut this in and line up uh, so I don't have to add any extra edge loops. And so I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add another edge here. So I'm going to say insert edge loop and I'm going to add one more right there. And then I'm going to go into vertex mode. And there we go. I got it combined. Same number of edge loops. Uh, for both surfaces. Now if I wanted to I could go ahead and add another edge right down the middle. I'm not going to do that at this stage in the game because uh, I want to I want the software to give me a reason to do that and uh, uh, I could end up with a slight artifact here because there's a different arc between 
these edges and this single edge, but um, there may uh, it may not also be noticeable. So if it's not noticeable, I'm not going to worry about it. And so I want to select all these faces behind here. And I'm going to delete them. And it looks like I missed two. There we go. And so just, just about done here. I'm going to go into object mode. And then I'm going to combine these guys. So I'm going to say mesh combine. And then I'm going to weld these vertices. So I'm going to say edit mesh merge. And now if I hit the 3 key for smooth, this should all look pretty good. It's kind of looking dandy. Alright. And then what I need to do is I just want to do one more thing. Uh, if we look at my uh, reference picture, you can see here that there's definitely a rounded edge here at the top. And so I want to go ahead and add that rounded edge. So I'm going to go into edge mode here and I'm going to select uh, doesn't want to work. I want to check all my face normals at this point. So I'm going to go into my custom panel here and uh, I want to create a face normals button. So I'm going to say display polygons face normals and I'm going to hold down my shift and control key make a face normals button. And we can clearly see here that some of my face normals are facing one direction and some are facing the other. So I'm going to go into normals and I'm going to say conform to get them all facing the same direction. And then now maybe, if I turn off the face normals here, now maybe when I go to edge mode and I select this one and then double click select this one, it'll select all the ones in between, which is all I was trying to do in the beginning. And then I'm going to go ahead and say edit mesh extrude. And I just want to extrude these off the line a little bit. And I'm going to do this in the ortho viewport so that I can kind of push these all uniform in the same direction. And I'm just creating that, uh, that curved lip there. And so I'm going to go ahead and extrude it one more time. I'm going to flip the world mode because I already know that uh, the uh, local axis was not working. And then I'm going to push them in a little bit. Okay. And I'll accept that for now. Maybe one slight adjustment. Kind of round that off a little bit. Okay. And now I'm ready to go ahead and see how my control cage looks. Uh, am I done for the low poly version of this? Uh, so what I need to do in order to check that is I first have to go to edit duplicate special and we mirror it across uh, the vertical axis. And you can see here that we got a little bit of an issue here because we hadn't uh, checked our, um, our mirror settings yet so we're going to do that now. So I'm going to go ahead and say mesh combine and then I'm going to go into vertex mode. And I like merge to center. Um, and then I just, when it's crucial like this, I just use merge to center and I do them one at a time. Especially since we're just in the control, control cage uh, resolution. It's not a lot of work to do it this way. And if I do it this way, then I know I know that it's right because I individually saw to each vertex. The rest of these look close enough that I can just select it and say mesh or edit mesh merge. Okay. And 
and then if I hit the three key to check my work here, there it is, it's smoothing out rather nicely at this point. So now all I gotta do is duplicate it one more time. So I'm gonna hit Control D, I'm gonna say E here for rotate. And then I wanna rotate it at negative 72. And remember when I said I was gonna hang on to that extra polygon edge? Well, I didn't need it. So I'm going to delete it. And there we go. Negative 72. Uh, it's beautifully. Beautifully uh, merged. And then I accidentally messed that up. So I'm going to hit Control Duplicate, and then I'm going to rotate this 72 degrees, so negative 72. And then now if I hit Shift D for Duplicate with Transform, and why don't I save my scene? Because this is uh, almost done. I'd hate to lose my work at this point. I'm going to select all these guys, and I'm going to say Mesh Combine. And then I'm going to go into vertex mode, select the entire thing, say edit mesh merge. And then I was so careful about how I was keeping all my vertices lined up that uh, there it is, there's our rim. Uh, really looks pretty good. So the beauty of the way that we just built this is that we got a few artifacts here. I definitely need to fix some of the shape. Like this uh, should be flatter. Um, and you could nitpick it. You could say that you know that it doesn't look exactly like the uh, the image, but um, that's true because I'm not done. Uh, what I would do is I'd spend uh, some more time on this while I have it in the low res cage stage here, and I would go ahead and tweak all my shapes until I got them to look perfect. And then I would come in and uh, I would do the next pass, which I'll put into uh, part two of this, of this uh, tutorial. It's kind of a long demo, so I'm going to have to break it into two. And part two is where we're actually going to come into the control mesh here. And I'm actually going to start chamfering uh, all these edges and uh, harden this thing up and um, really, really make it look good. So uh, right now, this is, uh, that's it. That's all there is to it. Um, hopefully uh, I made it look easy and you, you're starting to think that uh, you can build something uh, that's kind of hard surface like this, more complicated, and uh, not be so worried about it. Um, again guys, the devil is in the details. Uh, it's all in your pre-planning. So you gotta, you gotta plan it out ahead of time in order to have success uh, in the modeling time. Uh, if you don't plan things out before you go in and start building it, what uh, that usually results in is you just having to do it over and over and over again. Um, if you spend some time planning it out in Photoshop and then uh, going and building it in Maya when you think you've got it to a stage where, um, where you can build it, uh, you'll end up shaving you know, at least a day or two or, or hours or whatever uh, off your completion time. So there it is, that's phase one. That's the control cage for the um, Mercedes uh, AMG rim. And uh, the next section, or the next phase, will be um, completing the rim segment and chamfering everything and then adding the details like the uh, nuts and bolts. Okay, so we'll see you next time.